welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. And thank you so much to everyone who watched the Saturn Direct video. I think that's been my highest rating video. It had something like 550 views. I was blown away. So from that experience, I think I learned some things. And I think I learned that you guys like the news to be quite quick and efficient. So this time for October, instead of me doing three videos, I'm just going to do one great big video and we're going to have an introduction at the start which you can watch or you can click on the uh, quick links below. I'm going to put jump links below and make sure that you'll be able to jump ahead just to be able to get your news. So with that in mind, I'm not going to muck around. I'm going to be really, by the way, that's a very Aussie expression. On that, I had um, someone give me a comment. By the way, sorry if you hear sirens outside. I don't know what's going on. Uh, I had a comment by one of the lovely viewers on this channel. And thank you so much to everyone who's subscribed. Please keep subscribing. It really helps me out a lot. Uh, but one of you had written... Uh, finally an Aussie and then I wanted to write back but then I think it got deleted or somehow I wasn't able to see it anyway hello to my fellow Aussies and yes I am Australian I grew up in Sydney and then I moved to the United Kingdom uh, when I was about 24 so quite some time ago and um, and I spent about a year in the United States and that was a very formative year so You'll hear a mixture of three things in my accent. You'll hear Aussie, you'll hear British, and you'll hear sometimes even American. That has been uh, the case for a long time. So I agree. It's always good to hear another Aussie accent. And if you like Aussies who do astrology, I would urge you to check out Santos Bonacci. He's been one of my teachers and he's absolutely fantastic. So without further ado, I'm going to race through the news because I know you like it fast. And uh, let's have a look at what's going on. Well, the first thing I have to say is happy equinox. Now, I am recording this on the 21st of September. I'm hopefully going to launch this on the 22nd, which I believe is the day. So wherever you are in the world could be short it could be a long day who knows but uh, it's going to be a good day so <clears throat> that is something to be excited about right there uh, I wanted to point out in the news so one of the things I do when I do my introduction is I look back at the month that we've had I know the month is still going and it's not done yet but I just take a look at the energies that are in operation uh, as you know we've got this Mars K2 energy very firmly in operation now and I think we're all getting quite used to it I think that's quite a stable energy that uh, we're just so familiar with and the thing that I wanted to raise that brought that up into my mind as a good example was um so i've got here mars k2 still in operation in the 10th house it was hannah gadsby i just happened to click on a link by the guardian that um featured she is uh she was the mc at the emmys so i thought oh, let's have a watch of that it's two three minutes and I had to jot it down. It was so clever. She said, Hannah, Hannah Gadsby recently made a joke, September 18th at the Emmys, saying, okay, this is the joke. Jokes? What are jokes these days? We don't know. I thought that was so funny because it's so true. You know, I think this Mars K2 conjunction in the 10th house of, you know, world stage, career fame, honours, spotlight, all these kind of things the Me Too movement, women saying, hang on a minute, you know what I mean? Uh, it is a very confusing time right now and, and it's hard to tell jokes these days. No one really knows what that is. So to me, when I heard that, that to me was another good example of Mars K to conjunct in the 10th house right now. I just thought, yep, that's definitely a comment on the astrology of our times. Uh, I also wanted to point out very, very, very quickly, uh, September 10th was World Suicide Prevention Day. I know this because I write articles for a psychiatric clinic based in London uh, as part of my work. Um, so obviously I'm mostly, about 75% of my time is spent doing coaching and astrology and the other quarter of the time I'm writing articles uh, as a you know 
bread and butter income kind of thing. And I wrote an article about World Suicide Prevention Day. And, you know, the clinic that I write for, I think they would be, they might even be alarmed if they know that someone who's really an astrologer most of the time is writing their articles. But uh, they really like my work. So, you know, that's, that's good. Uh, but I wanted to bring it up because... I don't know, for some reason I just I just put it as a quick note here to say that if you've ever had any thoughts around that, and I know this is a bit of a morbid topic and people don't really talk about it, but this is exactly why it needs to be talked about. I also did an article about OCD and, and, and some of this content matches both. If you've ever had any thoughts of, um, you know, what's the point, what am I doing here, uh, I want to check out a birth school, I'm sick of it, you know, just the same thing keeps happening, uh, what is the point of all this? And believe me, I've had all of these, um, I completely understand. Astrology is something that has really come into my life and it's absolutely transformed my world because it's shown me never give up. You know, there's always things in your future. There's always stuff coming up. There's always, there's going to be a shift of time cycles. There's going to be, you know, a yoga that comes into form or, or, or there's movement constantly. We don't know what's coming. And astrology is just so incredibly profound. I wish I could have written the article about astrology now that I think about it. Um, you know, and I just thought to myself, well, I have a small audience and I would like to say that um, you know every time I look in a chart and every time I get to know someone through their stars every time I open that screen up and I get to see wow that's exalted wow that's you know in this position wow that's like this like every time just bang 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 I just love it and to me every single person on the planet is so incredibly amazing and has gifts and the deeper you dig into the charts the more gifts you find and yeah I really just wanted to say firstly that all of those thoughts are very natural sometimes we don't realize sometimes we think we're alone when we're having strange thoughts one of the things um, when I was writing the article on OCD and I got to chat with basically the head psychiatrist of that particular clinic she was saying that you know people don't realize how often it is that and how every day unusual thoughts are you, know, you might be walking down the street and you'll think of harming a baby or you know things like that which are seemingly very alarming but actually everybody has these thoughts so yeah for some reason I felt compelled to talk about World Suicide Prevention Day I don't know why but there we go um and that yeah I mean astrology is just brilliant because it shows you Hang in there, there's stuff coming up. The other thing I wanted to say about, yes, this is relevant for the next three months potentially. You might also be thinking about the ordinariness of life. You might be thinking, well, what is it that I do? What am I contributing? I'm not really doing much. You know, I, I just walked the dog, I had a coffee, I did my work, I came home, right? You might think, what kind of a day is that? That is a beautiful day. That is a glorious day. That is a fantastic day in time. The fact that you lived it peacefully is quite possibly, I mean, your day lived with that amount of peace being exuded into the world. That could be preventing a war from breaking out in another country, right? So always look at an ordinary day as a big achievement that's potentially preventing this whole thing from ending do you know what I mean like you are vital is what I really want to say and we all are every single one of us is so yeah I just thought I'd touch on that uh oh my gosh I've already spoken too long and we have so much to get through so Mars K2 is still in operation correct yes it is what do we want to what are we going to look forward to in October 
we have got many things to look forward to. I think October is going to be a really lovely month. I think things are going to change possibly in November. I think that could be a time when, mm, not too sure, I, I will talk more about that in November. But I'm thinking October should be largely okay, even though there are, I've just watched a series of predictions by someone I really respect who thinks October, November, December could potentially be catastrophic or chaotic or you know what I don't know but uh, I'm when I put together my notes for October I'm, I'm kind of not seeing anything too drastic so what do we have happening in October we've got a new moon October 8th in Virgo so it's time to plant seeds and where else would we love to plant these seeds other than in Virgo earthy beautiful Virgo uh, that is a terrific place to plant seeds and I'm suggesting that we plant seeds in relation to our skills, our career, uh, paying off debts. If you have any debts, uh, that would be a good thing to do. These are good things to wish for. October 9, 10 and 11. Now for all of you, I'm going to talk a little bit more about October 9, 10 and 11. This is just a really lovely time in this month where we've got a whole bunch of planets hanging out together and we're going to have a look at that so and they're all going to hang out in Libra so it's focused on relationships business and personal romantic your marriage the person you're married to uh, be creative and artistic and fun in your relationships so that's like an overall view but as I go through each sign we're going to talk a little bit more about where that's happening in your chart. So this month we're going to really look at the congregation of planets because there's quite a few hanging out together. And we're also going to talk about Jupiter because Jupiter is making quite a big move. Uh, Jupiter is moving out of a sign it's been in for a very long time. So yeah, <clears throat> this congregation, it looks fantastic. Uh, now full moon in Aries on October the 24th. Uh, you know, this is when the moon emerges victorious, I hope, as I've got written here, um, in her fullest I am self. It's, it's going to be really a time to come full circle on some things regarding your whole self, your entire being. How amazing is that? Uh, a big conclusion about yourself, who you are. Perhaps you're going to make a big shift in how you are in relationships, this is happening, well, actually, it's, yes, I mean, it's aspecting seventh house. Well, it's Aries. No, the I am. I think that's going to be quite interesting. Who knows, closer to the time, if I have time, maybe I'll do a little video. That might be a fun one to do, like a little video update for each sign. So let's see how I go on time. But without further ado... We are absolutely going to fly through the zodiac now because I know you guys like it rapid fire. You like it quick. So Aries moon, welcome Aries moon. We're going to take a look at two major things that are happening this month. One of those is the movement of Jupiter. And we're also going to take a look at, I'm calling it a big congregation of several planets in the seventh house. A lot of planets bunching together uh, in the seventh house in the middle of the month. So we're going to have a look at where that big energy sits for you. So Jupiter moves from Libra into Scorpio on October the 11th from your 7th house to your 8th house and it stays till March 2019. Guys, that's a long time and of course it's going to be a long time because it's Jupiter. But you know, Jupiter was in... Uh, so was in your seventh house. Do you know how long for? I had to click back quite some way. September 11, 2017. Can you believe it? Can you believe Jupiter has been in that same spot for so long? It's because of the retrograde. He did a great big retrograde. So wow, did he stay in your seventh house for a long time. Now you're very lucky. You're one of the lucky signs because Jupiter was happy being in the seventh house in, in Libra. So you would have had a good time with that. Uh, when he makes the shift on October the 11th into that 8th house, this is going to be a time for you to really look after your health, 
look after your energy uh, and build your spiritual self, okay? This is not a time to push hard and you'll run yourself into the ground possibly. Um, really do look after yourself. So don't, you know, Jupiter, we might want to get a bit spiritual here. Uh, let's have a look at that big congregation of planets. So who have we got in the seventh house? We've got Mercury, Venus, Moon and Jupiter <clears throat> all around October 10th hanging out together. And I just think this. when I saw that, I thought, well, this is great. We should definitely talk about this. They're going to move and they're going to be on their way. The sun is nearby, but it's just it's just kind of quite concentrated. You've got the sun, you've got just about everybody there and they're all the good ones. So I'm well. I, I shouldn't say that, <laughs> but they, it's, it's all the good ones. Uh, so really, I mean, I'm thinking that, and this is the middle of the month, so I'm thinking there's a lot of energy concentrated in your relationship sector. So if there's a lot of energy concentrated there, go for it. Enjoy your relationships. Be creative in your relationships. Have fun. Be artistic. Do something different. Shake it up be new, you know, try and work those energies because they're all going to be hanging out there. And you've got your Saturn and Mars, Ketu, Rahu, you, you, we're all comfortable with those now. They've been pretty stationary. So also this party of planets are going to be waving goodbye to Jupiter. So I think this is a good time to really be creative with relationships. So I think that's what I'm going to say there for you, Aries Moon. Okay, we're going to welcome Taurus Moon. Welcome Taurus Moon. Thank you so much for joining. Now we're going to take a look at two major things this month. We're going to have a look at your Jupiter because he's going to be making a big shift and we're going to look at a congregation of planets uh, which is happening there in your sixth house. So let's begin with Jupiter. Jupiter moves from Libra into Scorpio October 11th. Now this is quite a profound shift uh, because well, he's moving from your sixth house to your seventh house. It's a profound shift because Jupiter is going to stay in the seventh house until March the 29th, 2019. This is quite a long time. But it's not as long as where Jupiter has just been. Jupiter has been in your sixth house since September 11, 2017. That is a long time, isn't it? Uh, and I'll tell you something, Taurus Moon. He wasn't particularly happy in your sixth house that's not one of the better placements uh, it's not one of the placements where he feels comfortable but I have good news to report because he's going to be moving into the seventh and he's very happy in the seventh so after October 11 and a few days after and maybe even a couple of weeks or a few weeks just watch it you I'm hoping that you have a shift and I'm hoping you have a lift I'm hoping you have better energy come in for you happier energy uh, especially around relationships and business, okay? And I think you need that, Taurus, don't you? You need some uh, some life in that area. Uh, we've got a big congregation of planets happening in the sixth house, so it's really incredible. We've got several planets, they're all hanging out there, and as I've been saying, they're all the good ones. I know I shouldn't say that, but it's Mercury, Venus, Moon, Jupiter. They're, all, they're kind of going to wave Jupiter goodbye. Uh, sun is nearby. Sun isn't in the same house, but they're all kind of, everybody's just together, so that's why I wanted to feature this as a thing, uh, because there's going to be a lot of planetary energy concentrated in a slice of the zodiac here. So where is that happening for you? That is happening in your sixth house. So, and that's Lib Libra mid-month, October 10th, around that kind of time. Uh, so that is balance and creativity in regards to career and health. I really think career is going to be the focus here. I definitely think career and I think skills and I think enjoying your skills and I think sharing your skills and sharing what you're good at and definitely uh, the artistry of what you do in your career. Let's not forget we've got Mercury and Venus together and the moons hanging out. These are all happy, artistic, good, flowing kind of, and okay, Venus is in retrograde, that's fine. I never find that to be a problem. I've observed that closely in my own life and uh, that, that one's always been okay. So um, yeah, I think this is good news for you, Taurus Moon. I'm really liking what I see here and I think you're going to have a good time. So, Gemini Moon, we are going to welcome you. 
Gemini Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, we're going to have a look at two major things today. We're going to have a look at the shift of Jupiter. Jupiter is shifting house. It has been in the same spot since 2017, so that's big news. And we're also going to look at big congregation of planets happening in your fifth house. But let's begin with Jupiter. So we've got Jupiter moving from Libra into Scorpio on October the 11th uh, from your fifth house to your sixth house. And he's going to stay there until March 29, 2019. So that's a very long time. But guess what? Jupiter was in your fifth house since September 11, 2017. That's a very, very long time because he did a retrograde. Wow, has he stayed in that area for you for a long time. You're one of the lucky signs because for the long transit, of September 11, 2017 to October 11, it's coming up. He was in your fifth house. He loves being in the fifth house. So you've been very lucky there. Um, where he's shifting to now, he's not thrilled to be in the sixth. And when a planet isn't thrilled to be in a particular house, it's kind of like us. When we go, you know, on holiday or sleep or stay somewhere where it's not our home, Okay, we might be excited for the first few days, but we start missing our own home, don't we? And the planets are actually the same. Uh, you know, there might be a bit of excitement at the start, but then they're like, oh, I'd really rather be in my own bed. Uh, so, so yeah, um, Jupiter isn't, isn't, isn't thrilled to be in the sixth, but uh, you've luckily got some better times coming. So after the... After March 29, 2019, Jupiter's very happy being in the seventh. So don't worry. You see, you're not one of the unlucky signs. Believe me, there are some signs that are getting kind of double trouble. So um, you're not one of those. It's, it's mixed. It's balanced. It's kind of like great time. Yeah. Rather be in his own home and then, you know, happy times again. Uh but I'm, you know, it also depends on what else you got going on in the chart um, and what you've personally got going on. So, you know, we've got a big congregation of planets happening in the fifth house. And who are the planets? We've got Mercury, Venus, Moon, Jupiter. The sun's nearby. Not in the same house, but it's close. Um, so they're all hanging out and they're, they're kind of having a party about to say goodbye to Jupiter who's leaving. So, but it's fun. I'm getting a good vibe from this. It's kind of concentrated. It's a lot of planetary energy in one slice of the zodiac for everybody. So that's why I'm featuring this as a thing. Now, this is all happening around mid-month, October 10th, kind of for a few days, but it's it's decent. You know, it's, it's long enough um, to talk about. And what I'm seeing is that it's all about balance and creativity in regards to your creative self-expression. So it could be creative self-expression, it could be how you are with your children, it could be how you are in romance, it could be how you are with relationships in many ways and, and um, the fun that you create with people. So we've got Mercury, Venus and Moon here. Venus is happy here, very happy. Jupiter is very happy. This is lovely energy. This is really nice Gemini Moon. So I mean create some beautiful memories, create some some memories that you want to hang on to forever. You know, get the camera ready, have a party, capture some natural laughter. Some of the best photos I have are of me and my friends and we just, you know, I always take pictures at some moment when someone's told a, a really funny joke or a really crude joke or whatever. I mean, it's just great to capture natural laughter. Uh, and you're Gemini Moon, so, you know, I can see you doing that. Well, Gemini Moon, I'm going to have to move on. It's been great chatting with you. Now we're going to welcome Cancer Moon. Cancer Moon, apologies about that, Cancer Moon. The video got cut. So we're going to take it from the top. Uh, this time I'm basically going to feature two major things. We've got Jupiter shifting house, and that's really big news. And we've also got a lovely congregation of several planets in one sort of slice of the zodiac. So... Uh, we're going to really focus on these two things because I think the other energies, you know, the Saturn and the Rahu Ketu axis and Mars, we're kind of we're quite familiar with what's going on there. 
Um, so let's have a look at Jupiter. Jupiter moves from Libra into Scorpio on October 11th from your fourth house to your fifth house and stays until March 29, 2019. It's a very long time. But if we look at where Jupiter has been, Jupiter was in your fourth house for a very long time, since September 11, 2017, in fact. So that was a very long time. Uh, and I can tell you something. Um, Jupiter was not happy to be in the fourth house. Uh, I don't think he could be as productive as he would have liked. And I've got very good news for you to say that um, he's going to be very happy to be in the fifth. This is a very good transition for you, Cancer Moon, so I'm really happy. Uh, expect good times. I've got here romance, creativity, children, all the peak experiences of life. I really hope you can magnetize some of those and I hope they're very expansive as we know Jupiter is very expansive. Uh, let's hope <clears throat> that Jupiter is very magnetically attractive to um, bring to you lots of beautiful times and memories, especially with people you love. Uh, we've got a really big congregation of planets, and that's until, of course, uh, March 29, 2019. Fantastic. Enjoy that. Got a big, big congregation of planets happening in your fourth house. Uh, now, who are these planets? They're Mercury, Venus, Moon, Jupiter. The Sun is quite nearby. So it's quite extraordinary. They're all kind of congregating <clears throat> in, in a in a slice of the zodiac uh, for everybody. So now for you, where is this happening? In the fourth house, and that's Libra mid-month around October 10. Uh, so I'm kind of looking at that and saying balance and creativity in your relationships at home or to do with your emotions, okay? So, and because we've got quite a few happy planets here, Mercury and Venus are very happy. So I'm really wishing and hoping that that is a fun time for you uh, and, and you know not too much more but of course it does depend on what's happening in your chart specifically uh, you know I'd have to really take a look and all that kind of thing but I, I'm just very happy that I have good news to report to you today so look forward to that Cancer Moon look forward to October 11th and onwards I'm hoping you experience a shift so Cancer Moon, thank you for joining. Leo Moon, welcome. Welcome Leo Moon, thank you for joining. Uh, let's take a look at what's going on. This time I'm talking about two major things. We're going to have a look at Jupiter making a big shift from one house to another. And then we've got a big congregation of planets happening in a particular area of your chart. So these are the two things I'm going to focus on today. So Jupiter moves from Libra into Scorpio uh, on October the 11th from your third house to your fourth house and will stay until March 29, 2019. Now you might think that's quite a long time. Well, guess what? Jupiter has actually been in your third house for an even longer period of time since September 11th, 2017. That's very long. And that's because of the retrograde motion. So Leo really stayed in a certain place for a long time. Uh, Jupiter, sorry. I just said Leo stayed in a place. Jupiter stayed for a very long time. Um, now was Jupiter happy in your third house? No, not particularly, uh, you know, not, not thrilled to be there. Um, and I don't have terribly good news to report. Uh, he's not particularly thrilled to be in your fourth house either. How I want you to see this is, you know, when you go on holiday and you love it for the first few days, but then after a really long time, you start to miss your home. That's kind of how the planets feel. They miss their own home, they miss their own bed, they miss their duvet, you know. Okay, these are very earthly things and it's not like that, but you know, they miss they miss the energetic source, the, the place where their energy operates the most freely and the most comfortably. So, I mean, look, it's not like Jupiter's bad here, um, but it just may mean that... There might be a bit of focus on family, home, emotions, that kind of thing, him going into the fourth. Uh, and, and all that we'll need is just, you can combat that beautifully with your own free will and your own wisdom. Okay, so just 
be the Jupiter. <laughs> you know, when you go into situations, be that wise, calm person. There we go. That's what's that one. Now let's have a look at the big congregation of planets. It's happening in your third house. So what have we got going on here? Well, I mean, I think this should be fun. I'm really excited. When I saw that big congregation of planets, they're all kind of together. And who have we got here? We've got Mercury, Venus, Moon. Venus, Moon, very happy to be here. Uh, we've got Jupiter. You know, they're just about to wave goodbye to Jupiter. They're kind of having a little party, you know. The sun's nearby. Uh, it's it's a really nice, nice gang. So I'm kind of thinking third house is going to be the focus for the middle of the month. Um, so we're looking at balance and creativity in relationships and your personal sense of power and courage. Leo Moon. You might have to draw deep. You might have to pull on some of your own power and courage. Um, I'm not predicting anything bad. I'm just saying that uh, that that might be needed, you know. And it might be needed with your siblings. It might be needed with your friends, that kind of thing. It, it should be an interesting time all round. But, uh, of course, there are other planets. There's Saturn. There's, you know, there's lots going on. So And, of course, there's whatever's going on in your personal chart. So, you know. I wish you well, Leo Moon. Uh, and don't you worry because, you know, after, I'm pretty sure that for you, after he's been in the fourth, yes, uh, Jupiter's very happy to be in the fifth. So that's coming. You've got good stuff coming, believe me. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Leo Moon. And I'm going to welcome Virgo Moon. Virgo Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, we are going to scoot through very quickly two major things. We're going to have a look at what Jupiter's doing because he's making a big shift from one house to another. And then we're going to have a look at a big congregation of planets. They're all hanging out together. We've got all the good ones. We've got Mercury, Venus, Moon, Jupiter, uh, and the sun's nearby. And I know I shouldn't say all the good ones. That's terrible. <laughs> but um, I'm saying it. So, you know, look, I... This comes from a Saturn fan, do you know what I mean? I love Saturn, so, uh, but we're not focusing on Saturn this time. Maybe next month. Um, let's get back to Jupiter. So Jupiter moves from Libra into Scorpio on October the 11th uh, from your second house to your third house. And he'll stay there until March 29, 2019. Now, you're one of the lucky ones, Virgo Moon, in terms of what you've had. You had Jupiter in your second house since September 11, 2017. You've had a really good time with Jupiter. You've been very lucky. Now he's going to shift into the third. And I can tell you something, he's not thrilled to be in the third. Um, and when a planet's not thrilled to be there, it's, it's like, you know how you, you go on holiday or something and you're excited the first few days when you go somewhere new, but then you start missing your own home, you start missing the comfort of your own home. Planets feel the same. So, I mean, Jupiter's not too excited to be in the third. Maybe after the first few days, it's excitement of a new place, but, but uh, you know, it's not one of the better placements. Um, your sense of power and courage may, you know, maybe may be tested somewhat um, in relation to this. I'm not 100% sure. But let's have a look at some nice things. We do have nice things. I do have good news for you. We've got big congregation of planets happening in the second house, in your second house. Now, who are these planets? We've got Mercury, Venus. They're very happy. Yeah, Venus is in retrograde, but you know that's she's more powerful at this time. Uh, Moon and Jupiter. This is around mid month, October tenth. They're all in Libra in the second house. The sun's nearby. You know, this is all nice. I'm hoping it's nice. Uh, and I'm going to say here, balance and creativity needed in the area of your family, home, speech, resources, could even be to do with your work, but what I'm going to say is it's a time of artistry and a time yeah, be creative. Let loose. Have a bit of fun. Have a bit of fun with your family members. Uh, maybe you want to decorate your home. Maybe you want to do something like that. Maybe you want to buy some stuff. You know, maybe there's been a fancy thing that you've been eyeing up. Maybe it's time to do that. You've got Mercury and Venus here. There's some artistry. They're very happy here. Um, I think explore your inner artist and let loose a bit. 
it's feeling nice it's feeling nice so Virgo moon it's been an absolute pleasure and I'm now going to welcome Libra moon Libra moon welcome uh, we're going to take a look at two things, two major areas today. We're going to have a look at Jupiter. Jupiter is making a very big shift on October the 11th, um, big shift that we haven't had for a while. And then we've got a big congregation of planets. They're all, well, for you, let me tell you, okay, well, you've got a big, big, big congregation happening. So how about I just jump into this straight away. Jupiter moves from Libra into Scorpio on October the 11th. Uh, from your first house to your second house and will stay until March 29, 2019. So now this is seemingly a very long transit. But let me tell you, let's look at where Jupiter's just been. Jupiter has just been in your first house since September 11, 2017. So he did a great big retrograde uh, in that house, which is pretty amazing. Sometimes they retrograde over two houses. He's just done it in one it seems um, and I can tell you something Jupiter wasn't happy to be in your first house so I really want you to pay particular attention to this shift because Jupiter is going to be happy to be in your second house now what do you have to look forward to here well I'm saying expect wealth uh, you know increase in wealth for sure to be free of enemies sounds a bit archaic but why not that's good we like that <laughs> I love these ancient Indian texts. They're just great, you know, to be free of enemies. Uh, good, good times with family, I'm saying. That's something I've put in there. Definitely, you know, get, have some fun times with the family. Absolutely. So, I mean, look, this is great. I'm excited for you because you've got good news. Some, some people don't have good news this time and you have good news. Now, you've got even more good news. I mean, October is, this is kind of your month really as well, isn't it? Uh, Libra moon, this is all about you. We've got the big congregation of planets happening on your moon. You know, for everyone else, I'm saying in this house, that house, for you, it's bang on your moon. So this is really exciting. Um, who have we got here? We've got Mercury, we've got Venus. Venus is very happy. Moon's very happy. And this is around October 10th. Okay, Jupiter's moving, but not very rapidly. So they're all kind of together. Mercury, Venus, Moon, Jupiter, the Sun is nearby. Sun's not in the same house, but they're all, they're all kind of in the same sector of the zodiac. They're all in the same kind of area. So it's really exciting. Uh, th this is on your Moon, guys. This is on your mind. Your mind, your emotions, mother. What else have we got here? Moon. A lot of things definitely your mind a lot on your mind you might have a lot on your mind I mean it could just manifest in that way I'm saying so this is around Libra mid-month October 10th I'm kind of saying in those few days around there I'm saying this is all about you this month is all about you for sure um, we know that but uh, energy concentrated on your sense of self and who you are and how you feel about yourself and how you think about yourself and how you think in general there's a lot of planetary energy on your moon it's exciting it's really exciting wow I'd, be, I'd love to hear how that manifests if you're a Libra moon and you want to put something in the comments please do um, because yours is one of the very exciting ones I remember getting excited when I put yours together I must rush on to the next one, Scorpio Moon. Scorpio Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, we're going to have a look at two major things. We're going to have a look at Jupiter. We're going to have a look at the big congregation of planets happening in your 12th house. So without further ado, because I think we've mastered all the other energies. We know what's going on. Saturn's been there for ages. You know, Rahu Kate have been in the same place for ages. So we're going to look at, there's some excitement here. So let's look at this. Um, Jupiter moves from Libra into Scorpio on October the 11th. That's very exciting. From your 12th house to your first house. Stays until March 29, 2019. So now that seems like a very long time. But I can tell you, Jupiter was, if we look at where Jupiter has been, Jupiter has been somewhere for far longer. And that's in your 12th house. He was in your 12th house since September 11, 2017. Did a great big retrograde. He's really stayed in that same area for a very long time. Uh, Jupiter wasn't happy to be in your 12th house. Um, and I can tell you something else. 
Yes, Jupiter's not particularly thrilled to be in the first house either. You'd think he would be, but um, you're going to have a good time with Jupiter after. So March 29, 2019, after that, you've got a really good time coming up with Jupiter. But um, I think with Jupiter being here in the... Um, in the first house of self, I mean, I think it's going to be wisdom. You might have to hone your wisdom in regards to the whole self and other thing. You know, so um, how you are as a self, how you are with others. And uh, if you've got any codependence or anything like that, I would definitely suggest this very good time to be working through some of that. And in fact, Jupiter might be helping you to learn some of those lessons at this time. Uh, and of course, if you ever need any help with any of that kind of thing, I love working on that. It's one of my favorite things to study, um, codependence, self and other, um, all of these dynamics, narcissist, empath, you name it, I love it all. So get in touch if you ever need any form of assistance. Um, let's take a look at this big congregation of planets you've got going on in your 12th house. So who have we got here? We've got Mercury, we've got Venus, we've got Moon. We've got Jupiter, we've got Sun nearby, they're all hanging out, all the cool gang, they're all together. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> um, that's very naughty of me. I, I'm a Saturn fan, you know. But uh, these these do like to be together. I mean, maybe Sun tends to burn things up a bit, but uh, that's okay. Sun's not in the same house, so it's good. But I'm liking this because there's a great big congregation. They're all kind of in the same sort of area. Same slice of zodiac for you. Now, whereabouts is that? That's your 12th house. And this is all around the mid-month, October 10th, you know, 9, 10, 11 type time around there. Uh, they're kind of going to wish Jupiter goodbye. He doesn't move too fast, though. It's happening in your 12th house. So what are we looking at? Balance and creativity in your spiritual life. This is, I mean, we're looking at Jupiter going into your first house and you're going to have to get wise about relationships. I mean, that's making sense to me. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's going to be a spiritual time all around. You're going to get quite spiritual. Uh, and hopefully with some downloads there, I mean, look, we've got Mercury and Venus. Very, Venus is very happy there. Mercury with a little antenna. Mercury drawing, you know, love when Mercury's in the 12th house. Maybe not transiting. I love seeing it in a birth chart there. Anyway, I digress. I've got to move on. <laughs> been lovely Scorpio moon thank you for joining and I'm gonna say hi to Sagittarius moon Sagittarius moon welcome thank you so much for joining we are going to have a look at two things today we're going to have a look at Jupiter and we're going to have a look at a big congregation of planets in a particular area of the zodiac for you so what's happening where let's have a look at Jupiter first so we've got Jupiter moving from Libra into Scorpio on October the 11th from your 11th house to your 12th house and will stay until March 29, 2019. So you might think that that's a long transit, um, you know, from October 11th till March 29, 2019. But I can tell you that Jupiter has actually been in your 11th house for far longer. So um, Jupiter was in your 11th house well, is. I'm recording this on the 21st of September, so Jupiter is in your 11th house. Um, it has been since September 11, 2017. It's a very, very long transit because you did a retrograde. Sometimes a retrograde happens over two houses, but this time it was contained in one. Uh, if I have that correctly, I, th I think I do. Um, let's take a look here. So now, was Jupiter happy to be in the 11th house? Not particularly, and uh, I don't have very good news unfortunately he's not particularly um, thrilled to be in the 12th house either I've got a note here time to get spiritual so that's good um, you, if, if ever the chips are down you can always get spiritual uh, any time's a good time to be spiritual um, so yeah I mean you know watch a lot of Eckhart Tolle and uh, listen to Abraham Higgs and you know all that kind of thing I do that a lot that's my life, basically. <laughs> um, but I tell you what is very, very, very exciting for you. There's a big congregation of planets happening in your 11th house. Now, who do we have here? I tell you what, we've got the gang. We've got Mercury, we've got Venus, we've got the Moon, we've got Jupiter, Sun's nearby. 
And it's all around mid-month October, sort of 9, 10, 11, around that kind of area. I mean, I just thought this was beautiful. I just thought, wow, and they're all happy to be there. They're all happy. So Sagittarius Moon, have a party. Do something outrageous. I've got here balance and creativity in friends, circles, siblings, and I've got a note here, party time. Absolutely. Have fun with all that. You've got a lot of fast-moving planetary energy, whoosh, all congregated in that 11th house. Beautiful. Enjoy that. Don't worry too much about Jupiter. Yeah, Jupiter's making a big shift. Yeah, he's going to the 12th house. You know, he'll be reading books and being spiritual and meditating. That's all great. Have a party, Sagittarius Moon. Enjoy this energy as much as you can. All right, Capricorn Moon. Welcome, Capricorn Moon. Thank you so much for joining. It's great to see you. Now we're going to focus on two things today. We're going to have a look at Jupiter and we're going to have a look at a big congregation of planets happening in one area of your chart. So Jupiter moves from Libra into Scorpio on October the 11th uh, from your 10th house to your 11th house and stays until March 29, 2019. So now you might think that that's quite a long time that he's hanging out in that area till March 29, 2019. But Jupiter has actually been in your 10th house for a very, very long time. If we look back, how long has Jupiter been in your 10th house? My goodness, I mean, since September 11, 2017. That is a very long time. His retrograde kept him in that same house. Quite extraordinary. Um, I've got great news for you, Capricorn Moon. I'm so glad to tell you this. Jupiter is very happy to be in the 11th house. Lucky you. You're one of the lucky ones. Not everybody's getting this. You're one of the people getting this. So... Jupiter's happy to be in this 11th house. And I'm saying expect promotions, expect wealth, expect health, expect recognition, expect your hopes, dreams, and wishes to come true. I love being able to say that. And I'm saying that for you, Capricorn Moon. I wish you the best with your Jupiter. Lucky you. Uh, what else is exciting here? Well, we've got a big congregation of planets happening in your 10th house. Now, who have we got? We've got all the all the happy ones, you know, we've got Mercury, Venus, Moon, Jupiter, the sun's nearby. Okay, the sun burns things up a little bit, but that's okay. It's the soul. Um, but, you know, I mean, it's amazing. We've got all these kind of faster moving planets. They're all kind of congregating mid-month, October 10th, kind of around the 9th, 10th, 11th, that kind of time. They're going to say goodbye to Jupiter. Jupiter moves, you know, then he moves into the, but he doesn't move fast. So they're all kind of close. It's very nice. Um... And how I'm interpreting this is I'm saying balance and creativity in your career and in your family life. So mum and dad um, and, and your career, you know, uh, you, you're going to need some balance and creativity in that, in that area of your life. And bring out the inner artist. Bring out the inner artist at work if you possibly can because we've got this beautiful Mercury-Venus thing together there. Oh, and the moon. Um, Merc moon for you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Write, start writing a book <laughs> or write beautiful emails or just write. This is a good time uh, to be writing, especially in the context of career. Write articles, um, get a blog going, get an um, article in, um, you know, your industry magazine or something like that. I don't know. Something like that could be very exciting for you, Capricorn Moon. We're going to welcome Aquarius Moon. Aquarius Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Let's take a look at what's happening this month. So I'm going to focus on two. Hi, Aquarius Moon. Apologies, the camera just got cut, but that's okay. It all seems to be working now. Aquarius Moon, what I'm going to do today is we're going to have a look at two things in particular because I think we've pretty much mastered. Let me just make sure that the sound is recording. Yes, it is. I'm pretty sure that we've all just about mastered, you know, the Saturnian energy, the Mars K2 conjunction, the Rahu. We're, we're kind of, you know, the slow moving stuff. We're good with that. We've had a few months practice of that. We know what's going on there. So what's exciting this month is we've got Jupiter making quite a big shift. So that's something we're going to look at. And we're going to have a look at there's a big congregation of planets happening in a particular area of the zodiac for you. So we're going to have a look at both of these things. Now let's start with Jupiter. So Jupiter moves from Libra into Scorpio on October the 11th, which will be from your 9th house to your 10th house. And Jupiter will stay in this position in your 10th house until 
March 29, 2019. That's a long time and it seems like it's a long time but the thing is Jupiter, if we look at where he is right now, I'm recording this on 21st of September and where you know he's been so let's have a look ninth house he's been in your ninth house since September 11 2017 now in some ways you're very lucky Aquarius moon because that was an extremely long Jupiter transit and you got the best of it um, Jupiter is happy to be in the ninth house Jupiter oh, of course performs beautifully in the ninth house absolutely of course it does uh, so you, you've had a good run. I will say though that Jupiter's not particularly thrilled to be in the 10th house. It's not that it's a bad placement or that he doesn't do well there, but he's not the most comfortable. You know, the professor in the corporate arena, uh, it's, it's not ideal. Um, he will be happy in the 11th though, so don't worry. You've only got a few months and then you're going to have another really good transit, but you've had a sensational run. So uh, I'm very happy for you there, Aquarius Moon, and I hope that you were able to capitalize on that Jupiterian energy at that time. Let's have a look at this big congregation that's going on. We've got a huge congregation of planets happening in your ninth house. So who have we got? We've got all the cool gang ha hanging together. We've got Mercury, Venus, Moon, Jupiter, and the Sun just nearby. You know, not too close to burn, you know, to be too hot and controversial. Um, but got all the, all the cool gang together. I know I shouldn't say that, you know. I shouldn't have any bias towards any planet. But it is. It's kind of the cool gang hanging together. And I'm very curious to see how this pans out. Uh, I think it's going to be a really good time. That's kind of my feeling on it. But I'd love to hear how it, it pans out for you. Uh, this is what I'm kind of thinking here. So we've got... Um, it's happening in your ninth house and we're looking at mid-month so we're looking kind of 9, 10, 11 that's really the height of it where they're all really together and then they wave goodbye to Jupiter Jupiter moves into the other house but he's not moving fast so they're all, all kind of together um, it's very nice so I'm saying the focus here is balance and creativity in when it comes to your intellect when it comes to academia, when it comes to how you interact with man-made systems of thought and belief and what all of that means to you. Uh, who knows, maybe you're doing that Jordan Peterson self-authoring program, which by the way, I have enrolled in and I'm not particularly thrilled. I know, I probably shouldn't say that, but I mean, I'm yet to complete it, so maybe I should complete it first and then complain but <laughs> no but I'm a fan I, I think he's really cool and I've gained from a lot of his videos actually and you being Aquarius Moon I imagine that um, you've got quite the mind for his kind of content um, you know to be challenged in that way uh, or, or to be stimulated in that way maybe because um, that's really the popularity of him is happening really because I think Saturn in the um, I mean, gosh, while we're here, might as well have a look. Saturn in, yeah, Sagittarius, basically, yeah. Yep, that's what's going on. That's why he's popular right now. Anyway, I digress. I got onto that because of intellect and academia and, and, and religion and travel, long-distance travel, pilgrimages. Oh, look, this is fantastic. I mean, this is a lot more fun than... Uh, reading books and getting academic forget that who needs that we've got religion and travel and pilgrimages right here we've also got mercury venus is very happy to be here mercury and venus i mean together you know the artist artistic combination you've got moon here that mid-month kind of time i'm really liking all of this aquarius moon i really hope you're able to to capitalize off this big congregation this this party of planets that's happening in your ninth house and my vote is for travel if you get to choose any of these, put the books away and catch a flight. Go and have some fun. All right, Aquarius Moon, thank you so much for joining. And I'm going to welcome Pisces Moon. Pisces Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, today we're going to have a look at two major things because I think we've kind of got a handle on the bigger energies. We've got a handle on the Saturnian energy, the Mars, Ketu, the North Node, the Rahu, you know, where they are. They've been there for months. We know what's going on with those. So we're looking at the excitement. We're looking at the movement. And we're looking at Jupiter moving from 
uh, you know, Libra to Scorpio. We're going to have a look at that first. And then we're going to have a look at a big congregation of planets happening around your eighth house. That's very exciting. So let's get stuck in. Jupiter moves from Libra into Scorpio on October the 11th uh, from your eighth house to your ninth house and stays until March 29, 2019. So you might think that's a really long transit, but let's look at where Jupiter is coming from. Jupiter was in your 8th house and has been in your 8th house since September 11th, 2017. That's a long transit, right? That's a very long transit. And Pisces Moon, you have, you would have done a lot of significant work, I'd imagine, when it comes to 8th house matters, uh, when it comes to other people, in-laws, um, other people's money, finances, resources, uh, other people, yeah, trust issues even. Um, what else would you have done a lot of work? Occult, anything to do with the occult, digging deep, uh, unearthing, maybe mm, transforming, transformation, transformation. Oh my God, absolutely. I'm sure you've done a huge amount of work and your Pisces moon. Do you know what I mean? It's like, wow, you must have done a huge amount of work. Um, you might have gone quite deep on some things. And I'm very, very happy to tell you some good news because Jupiter is very happy to be in the ninth house. Yay! Uh, expect work success, wins, good fortune, pilgrimage, take a trip somewhere, take a big long haul trip somewhere if you can. Uh, enjoy yourself, Pisces moon. I'm sure you've worked really hard with this uh, Jupiter placement. Yeah, it's good to do something different and with this shift of Jupiter uh, this is great news so I'm really really pleased to announce this it is great um, we've got a big congregation of planets happening in your eighth house there so who have we got we've got we've got all the cool gang we've got Mercury we've got Venus we've got the moon we've got Jupiter we've got sun nearby sun's not in the same house but this is all happening kind of mid-month around October 10th sort of 9 10th 11th then Jupiter moves into the other house, you know, the others probably wave goodbye, but they're all kind of in that same sector of the zodiac. They're all hanging out together, so nobody's really that far away from each other. So that's why I'm kind of calling it a big congregation of planets, and it's happening in your eighth house. So, okay, so what do we have? We've got, as well as we just talked about, um, you know, your dealings with others, with in-laws, with other people's money, trust in others, um, perhaps transforming something deep within your own psyche. Okay, so there's, there's still some more of that to do. Um, and I haven't had a look at your Saturn or Rahu Ketu lately, um, and I'm afraid my time is running out. So I, if you've got other stuff going on and you're kind of wondering, oh, that sounds right, but it's, no, there's this going terrible in my life, or that's actually going really well, or whatever it is, your particular planets, how your setup is interacting with the movement of the stars, um, <clears throat> that could be playing quite a role. Well, that is playing quite a role, uh, you know, because it's about you and it's about the movement of the stars and how that touches you. So if you're curious to find out more, um, then do get in touch and, uh, you know, I'll be able to give you, sh you know, shine a light or shed some light on... Um, on what's happening in your particular chart. But Pisces Moon, I want to thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, I want to thank you for liking and sharing and subscribing and, and doing all that wonderful stuff. It really helps me out a lot. So thank you so much everybody for watching, those of you who perhaps have watched this far, and um, I look forward to next time.